breaking news out of Germany, a study done there by the, uh, the Robert Koch Institute, uh, which I believe is no relation to the American Koch brothers. So, you know, I, I just, I have to get that out there. I know it's stupid. Obviously, we're talking about Germany, but I know there will be some idiot uh, at some point who will come in the comments, and I probably won't see the comment, and they'll say, oh, debunked. That's just a, a, a Koch brothers right-wing uh, study. Doesn't count. That's as good as a word of the, of the Heritage Foundation. You know, no, this is not the Koch brothers. Uh, this is this is in Germany. This study is in German. Uh, and so I, I'm relying somewhat on translations from other people, okay? So it's not, I'm not reading the study directly. But, you know, if this is, if, if this is false, if the translation of the study is inaccurate, uh, feel free to call me out and give a citation if you have an alternate translation. But the, from what I saw, from what other people are interpreting this as, uh, the numbers are pretty clear. Nine, over 95% of Germans who have tested positive for the Omicron variant of the Wu flu were uh, at least had at least two shots they were fully vaccinated as we'd say and 28 percent of them have been boosted they had their booster shots now that number alone that's not going to tell you much because you don't know how much of the german population is vaccinated you say well if, a, if the population is uh a hundred you know is 99 percent vaccinated and 95 percent of them uh, of the people who test positive for Omicron uh, are vaccinated, well, then that would show that the vaccine is having some effect, right? Because uh, uh, the vaccinated folks in that case would uh, be uh, rep disproportionately represented as a, as a you know percentage of the Omicron cases. In other words, if unvaccinated people, for example, made up 1% of the German population, but they made up 5% of the Omicron cases, you could make the case that uh, being unvaccinated means you're five times more likely, uh, more at risk uh, for catching Omicron uh, than an unvaccinated person. Or, I mean, than a vaccinated person. Sorry about that. Actually, you know, I'm trying to be super favorable to the vaccine crowd here in this example. Um, but off the top of my head, that, that math doesn't quite make up. So I, I, I might be being way too generous and saying five times as likely. That might not actually be how those proportions make up, even though 5% is five times 1%, obviously. But either way, it would show that the vaccine is having some positive effect, at least when it comes to the Wu flu. Putting, assuming there are zero side effects, um, if the uh if vaccinated people make up uh only 95 and a half percent of the omicron cases but they make up more than 95 and a half percent of the whole population then that would show that the vaccine has some effect at reducing you know the risk of catching the woo flu but unfortunately that's not the case i'm three and a half minutes in here i've been trying to give the vaccines, you know, as good of a case as possible, trying to, trying to set up not a straw man, but a steel man. I wanted to steel man the, the case of the vaccine maximalists. But <clears throat> when you find out that the German population is actually only 71% vaccinated, yet the Omicron cases are ni over 95% vaccinated, there's no conclusion that you can draw from that other than the vaxxed, the jabbed, the good people who do who did as they were told by Dr. Fauci and by his German counterparts, those people are now more at risk for contracting the Omicron variant based on this data than the unjabbed, than those dirty people who are not allowed outside. Now, does correlation equal causation? No, not necessarily. I'm not going to say that this, you know, that this is a sure thing. All I'm saying is based on this study, based on this data, that's what we're seeing. We are seeing vaccinated Germans contract the Omicron variant at a significantly higher rate uh, than the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated make up 29% of the population, yet they only make up uh, just uh, like four and a half, un less than 5% of the uh of the omicron cases 
they're underrepresented by something like a factor of six. I mean, if if you were to take this data seriously, um, then we're dealing with a pandemic, not of the unvaccinated, but a pandemic of the vaccinated. And I know YouTube's going to get very upset at me for saying that, but I mean, it's right there. I'm going to link to the data. Now, I got in trouble for linking to my sources the other day, um, although I heard other people were having similar problems you know, on that Jack Murphy story. Apparently, somebody else I saw on YouTube uh, was uh, on Twitter talking about how they got a strike. I got, um, I don't know if I talked about it, I got a warning from YouTube. I didn't, uh, maybe I should appeal it, but <clears throat> I didn't because, you know, it's like I never do anything to get in trouble anyway. Um, or at least I never have. I th I wonder, if I, I think, well, I'm get, now I'm getting off in the weeds. I don't want to talk about that other story. I don't want to talk about my potential strike. Because if I get one, I get one. And you know what? I do this YouTube thing for fun uh, and to vent. If I get, you know, if, if I get three strikes for talking about the Wu flu and for talking about data, so be it. So what do the vaccine maximalists, what le do they have any leg left to stand on? Um, because if they are more likely to contract the virus, I guess the only thing that they could hang their hat on is like intensity, theoretically. They could say, oh, well, uh, sure, people who are vaccinated might be more likely to catch Omicron based on this German study. Uh, but the unvaccinated people who got it, well, they had a much, much worse time. The, you know, the few that did get it, that small, you know, 5% or whatever of the Omicron cases that were unvaccinated, they were much, much worse. Now, do we have any data to back that up? Um, no, not that I've seen. <laughs> we're not seeing all these unvaccinated people dying of Omicron. Uh, we didn't see it in South Africa, where less than 30% of the population is vaccinated. Um, down there, they said, you know, Omicron was a breeze. And it seems like uh, there is, the, you know, the pandemic in uh, in South Africa seems to be pretty much over. South Africa, I don't think, has the greatest medical system in the world. But uh, even down there, they're saying, no, our ICUs are not full. You know, we have plenty of hospital capacity. Things are, we're doing just fine. That was the last update I heard from the South Africans. And so if that's the case, you know, it seems like uh, the unvaccinated, uh, i.e. 72 percent, it's completely inverted from Germany. In Germany, uh, it's uh, just under 30 percent who aren't vaccinated. In South Africa, it's just under 30 percent who are vaccinated. And so if Omicron really was, you know, so deadly for, and, and, and uh, debilitating for the unjabbed, the South Africans would be telling us about that. And they haven't. They've told us the opposite. Um, and again, I, I, I keep. I think that it's important to keep citing the South African data because they're so significantly, uh, you know, unvaccinated compared to these other Western countries. Uh, the Western countries are highly vaccinated. The third world is highly unvaccinated. And so, judging how those different populations handle uh, the Wu flu in these different waves. I think is instructional because we have no control group left in any of our vaccine trials here. And so we can't really compare, compare apples to apples anymore. So what's, what is there left? What more of a defense could I mount for the, for the Japs? Um, I guess you could say, well, 28% per, percent of these, only, you know, only 28% of the Omicron cases were boosted. Um, perhaps I don't, I can't, I don't, I don't know what percentage of the German population is boosted. I'm sure it's changing every day. I could, I did not see up to date information on that. If somebody does have that, please, you know, put it in the description. Of course, it needs to be kind of relevant to now. If you come back in three months and say, oh, well, Germany's 50% boosted or 80% boosted, uh, that's not going to, um, be relevant to today's conversation. But if you happen to know, and this is within a couple days of the video being posted, please do link because I would be interested to know if the um, boosted population is uh, less than or more than uh, that 28 percent or 29 percent um, that, you know, represents them in the Omicron cases. Because maybe uh, <laughs> the, uh, the vaccine maximalist could come back and say, okay, sure. Well, maybe after two shots, you're more likely to get it than if you have no shots. But after three shots, you're less likely. It doesn't make much sense to me since they're all the same shot. Um, <laughs> and they're still vaccinating you against, you know, it's a vaccine that was developed for the alpha variant. 
uh, that, uh, so, you know, giving you three versus two versus four versus six now in the Netherlands, I don't see how that would make a damn bit of difference, you know, other than just pumping your body full of, you know, very nutritious spike protein um, that I'm sure your your brain and your heart and your reproductive organs are just, you know, they're just loving it. Because remember, um, all this defense that I'm trying to mount of the jabs, because I'm trying to be as jab friendly uh, since we are on YouTube, all of that is assuming zero side effects. And the more of these jabs you get, from what we understand, uh, the the worse any side effects, which again, we know there are no side effects, but if there were side effects, uh, from what we're told, they're getting worse. <laughs> Wink, wink. So what could, could what could explain, now that I'm through all the disclaimers, maybe we're far enough into the video I can get away with speaking a little more freely. Um, what would explain this statistical phenomenon in which we see the jab um, being diagnosed with Omicron at a higher rate than the unjabbed? Well, antibody-dependent enhancement would be one explanation. Uh, and interestingly enough, I'm sure, since Dr. Robert Malone, who's just banned from Twitter with over half a million followers, uh, he's appearing on Joe Rogan today. I assume, I hope this particular study gets brought up because I'm sure that Dr. Malone will talk about that possibility because there is a possibility when, uh, when you develop a vaccine um, that it triggers an immune response known as antibody antibody dependent enhancement where the antibodies that the body produces to combat uh, the virus do not neutralize the virus but rather um, kind of disguise it because the antibodies latch onto the antigens on the virus and the virus is still able to operate normally but the immune system sees the antibodies bonded to the virus and thinks, okay, that virus has been neutralized, but the virus is actually spreading around like normal. And so the immune system stops fighting it. It fails. And so the virus can just go on uh, completely unencumbered. So that may very well be what we're starting to see here. Um, and if we're starting to see it now uh, with a rate of, you know, 71% versus 95%, I mean, it's significant, but it's not like it's not like a thousand percent difference or something like that, I don't think, right? Unvaccinated people are still getting infected with this. It's not like uh, the the unvaccinated make up 0.1% of the Omicron cases because there's so many millions of vaccinated people who are just getting ravaged by Omicron. That doesn't seem to be what's happening. It just seems like, yeah, the virus is having a bit of an easier time uh, in attacking the unvaccinated people and infecting them. But as the virus continues to mutate, once, you know, they started down this path, perhaps the next variant, whatever comes after this, um, will be, uh, the, you know, will be even more enhanced by the antibodies if that's in fact what's going on. Because if the antibodies are in fact enhancing the uh, infectiousness, uh, the virality of the virus, it's a question by, you know, to what degree? You know, right now, it's less than a factor of two. Actually, that's incorrect. Because it's that smaller number that we have to watch. In terms of the statistics, I think I figured it out in my head. Now, it's been a long time, obviously, since I um, sat down I, sit down and, and did, uh, you know, this kind of math. I mean, it's obviously not tough math. It's just, I. it's the day before New Year's Eve. I'm not really thinking about math. But I think the way that these uh, these uh, proportions and these uh, uh, probabilities work is, is that if we see that the vaccinated make up 29% of the population, okay, and let's say they made up only, uh, what would the number be, 14.5% of the Omicron cases, we would then say, well, unvaccinated people are half as likely uh, to catch Omicron as the jab, as a jabbed person. Well, then, you know, um, in, uh, in, in to the same effect, you would say that jabbed people are twice as likely to catch Omicron 
as an unjabbed person. And so what I said initially, I think, is actually correct. Uh, the, you know, the proportion of unvaccinated people uh, who are who are being uh, testing positive for Omicron is one sixth uh, their proportion of the total population. It's like four and a half percent versus twenty nine percent. And so that's around six times less likely. So if unvaccinated people are six times less likely to catch the to test positive uh, for Omicron based on this study, well, then that means in this study, uh, the vaccinated were six times more likely. Correct? I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not um, uh, boomering my math, am I? I'm second guessing myself because that sounds pretty darn extreme, and I don't want to you know, sit here in my bubble and you know start mouthing off about how uh, people who are jabbed in Germany are six times more likely to test positive for the Wu flu. It's just even to me, even to my, you know, my, my skepticism, my, you know, my skeptic brain, that seems like it would be a much bigger story than it is right now. But I don't know how, how else to spin it. So between the data showing that Omicron is essentially the common cold, and now that jabbed people in Germany are testing uh, positive for the Wu flu at a rate six times more than uh, the unjabbed, or again, I'll, I'll say it in a safer way of putting it is that the jabbed or the unjabbed are six times less likely to test positive for the Wu flu. Um, in light of that, those two facts, because they are facts, YouTube can't dispute that. That's not my opinion. My opinion, based on those two facts, is that I don't know how they're going to keep this up for another year. We come and we're in New Year's 2022. I don't know how they can keep this going. How do you keep people convinced that this is the Black Death and you're all going to die unless you take the vaccine when, one, not a lot of people are going to be dying of this uh, proportionate to the amount of people who are going to catch it, just like the common cold. I mean, some people do die of the common cold. That happened with AIDS when people had AIDS. They caught a cold, they die. And so there's always going to be some people who die of the Wu flu. But if, you know, pretty much everyone catches this in any given year, and almost nobody dies of it, while at the same time people who are vaccinated for this virus are more likely to catch it, it's going to be very, very difficult to convince people, be afraid you're going to die unless you take the vaccine. I don't, I mean, I, I, I shouldn't underestimate the power of media propaganda, but this just, this seems like such a hard sell for me at this point. I mean, you know, I know some, I don't know people who are too crazy about this, but I know people who just generally, they watch the news and they hear, oh my gosh, Omicron is raging. We're supposed to be afraid. It's a good, I'm glad that I have my booster shot. You know, I know people like that, but if I show them this data, I don't know how they would still think that, at least the people I know. I think they're reasonable enough to where if they see, oh, I'm six times more likely to catch this because, uh, or not, I shouldn't say because, but statistically, my vaccination status is correlated with six times, with a, uh, uh, a six time a six fold increase in the risk of testing positive for this virus. I think that's going to make some people scratch their heads. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow, hopefully.